Story time. Towards the end of my industrial design degree, I did a few months of work experience at a Sydney startup called The Beehive. This was an early attempt at a digital studio with in-house design, 3D printing and laser cutting on demand. It was run by a really great bunch of guys, but sadly not sustainable in the end. However, it gave me a great opportunity to learn how to run these amazing machines. Once I went down the 3D printing route, however, I had to leave laser cutting behind. Well, not anymore. This is the laser box by Makeblock, a real laser with a real glass laser tube and a metric ton of intelligent features. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing it. Let's get started. How's it going guys, Angus here from Makers Muse. So as I mentioned, laser cutting was my maker tool of choice before 3D printing became more accessible. And I've worked with basic K40 China specials all the way up to high-end universal laser systems and everything in between. With laser cutters, it's important to establish what exact technology we're looking at. This is a glass tube CO2 laser system using mirrors to bounce that beam from the back of the machine through to the moving gantry and down the laser nozzle through a focusing lens. I've tested a few diode laser systems before on the channel, you know, the ones you like slap onto a 3D printer, but they are literal toys when compared to something like this. The max working area is 500 by 300 millimeters and the Z-axis has 25 millimeter of height adjustment. The laser tube is rated for 40 watts, which is fairly conservative for a laser system like this, but make blocks say it can cut up to 15 millimeter thick polonia, polonia wood, whatever, as the thickest material, but honestly, in my experience, you would realistically not be cutting much more than five or six millimeter material thickness on this machine without serious edge charring or probably having to use multiple passes. Build quality is, well, just look at it, spectacular. This machine is impeccable and weighs around 40 kilograms, so two people will be required to maneuver it into position. It's a desktop laser cutter, yes, but the entire desktop. Gas springs add a premium feel to the, to the top cover and make opening and closing the lid effortless. And all it has for a user interface is this one big button and a ring of status LEDs. After preliminary activation over USB, you connect the laser to your local network over Wi-Fi and control it almost entirely from your computer. Because the laser box is a smart desktop laser cutter as Makeblock describes it. But whoa, 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 hold on a moment here. Haven't we heard something like this before? Ah yes, Glowforge, the 3D laser printer. <sighs> Despite quite a long delay in their crowdfunding campaign, pre-order started in 2015, remember? The Glowforge is a real product that exists and looks quite similar in appearance, but also promises smart functionality. But I feel the need to point out that despite looking similar on the surface, these are two very different machines with different mechanical layouts and software. Neither is a clone of each other, I would say. If you have any experience of laser cutters of this size, then I don't need to tell you just how much of a nightmare they can be to calibrate and run, aligning mirrors, converting artwork in dodgy and often buggy software, figuring out power and cutting speeds, and the all too critical laser focus distance. It's a full-time job because, well, it was my full-time job for quite some time. But this thing, well, it does pretty much all of that on its own, almost. Let me show you. Makeblock provided this range of materials with the laser and each has its own color-coded sticker on it. When you put it into the machine and fire up the laser box software, the machine's built-in camera automatically detects what material it is and loads the appropriate settings. It's literally magic. And I can already see just how much time and effort this would save an educator, for example, in a busy classroom with kids screaming at them to get it going. Like next to nailing focus, getting the right settings for your laser cutter is one of the trickiest aspects of laser cutting. And this just does it for you, providing you use their consumables, that is. If you want to use your own though, you totally still can. You just have to create your own profiles and you might have to do a bit of trial and error to dial it in, but I am really happy that this isn't a locked down system. They make it easier if you want them to, but you can also use your own materials, which is super cool. And of important note, although it's a smart laser cutter and wants an internet connection, you don't need an internet connection to run this machine. Naomi Wu over on her channel checked this machine out and she was able to run it with no issues where she is. So that's a pretty big plus, especially if you're working on a locked down 
network. So what files can you laser cut? Well, first I need to explain the two main operations that a laser cutter can perform, etching or cutting. For cutting, you want a vector format of some kind, say a DXF or SVG, they're both good options and this software opens them with no issue. You can use almost any design software to export these formats from Illustrator to SolidWorks, Fusion 360, Corel Draw, honestly, pretty much any of them will export either one of these formats for cutting. For etching though, you can use either an image or vector and vectors can be used either with a fill etch where it will fill the entire inside of the, the outside vector or you can do a simple outline etch where it just etches the outline and all of these can be combined in the same job. You can cut and etch in the same job. I did find that with the software though, complex vectors like these discs, the, uh, the outside perimeter vector prevented me from selecting each segment individually. If I exported a DXF with multiple closed contours but not an outside perimeter, I could select them individually. So this software needs to be improved a little bit in that regard. You can't easily group and ungroup uh, different shapes to get them to etch and cut how you want. And also you can't align them perfectly. I just had to move them into the position where I kind of wanted them and just deal with it. But that's a minor usability complaint. The software is very intuitive. You can even do basic designing in it, such as this keychain that took literally 30 seconds to complete and maybe one minute to cut. You can also use a feature called Sketch and Cut, where you literally draw an image onto your material, put it into the laser, and the software uses the camera to convert it and cut it out. Could you imagine being at a market or shopping center during school holidays and offering this service? Yeah. Completing full etches takes time and patience. The laser head scans line by line to complete the image because it's just a single laser point. And you can choose from a range of filter and dithering options to try to get the best result. Images with strong contrast work the best as with other laser systems, but be prepared to do a few attempts before you're satisfied and be prepared for the fact that it takes a long time. The head doesn't move as quickly as I've seen in some other systems. Now we can't talk about laser cutters without discussing fume extraction and overall safety. To put it briefly, CO2 tube lasers pose a high voltage laser, fume and fire risk. I've come across budget laser cutters in the past where the high voltage laser power supply was arcing to the metal frame. Yeah, that really does happen. So it's a serious risk, but the build quality here is phenomenal and it seals the electronics away nicely. And the tube instantly cuts out if you open the cover, so there's no risk of looking at the UV death beam directly. And for extraction, Laserbox comes with this filtration unit that takes large HEPA filter cartridges. Now, it does well at removing particulates, but this machine does still produce quite strong odors during operation. The, the force of the extraction isn't that high, and acrylic in particular is very acrid smelling. So in addition to the provided filtration unit, I run this extraction fan to pull air completely clear of the workshop and it does a pretty good job, but I would not at all recommend running this machine or any laser cutter in an enclosed space, even with the filter box, you need to vent externally because it does still have quite strong odors. And there are materials of course that are super toxic to cut and should be avoided at all costs, such as PVC. If you're not clued into what materials to, are safe and what aren't, then it's probably best to stick with what MakeBlock provides. All right, so here's the first on Maker's Muse. Let's look at my um, laser cutter test models. I designed this to test the accuracy of this machine, how clean the edges are and how defined etches are. The parts cut by the laser box are very precise and fit together well straight off the machine. There is a minor kerf there, but it's totally easy to manage. However, cuts and especially etches leave a bit of a smear on the material. And this is because there's no air assist in this machine, which is a real shame. So an air assist basically is an air pump with a nozzle aimed at the cutting area that forces the smoke out and the, the cut material down and away to be pulled out by the extraction fan instead of just sort of pooling on the material. You can kind of mitigate this with etches by using a protective film and pulling it away after the etch, but it's not ideal. So I'd like to see an air assist added on here. That's perhaps another con though when looking at such a polish unit as this. There's not much room for user tweaks and upgrades. It's designed to be easy to use, but at the same time, that does lock down the system somewhat. You need to use their software, though thankfully you can use third party materials, but I think any user modification would no question void the warranty. But, and this is important, it's difficult to express just how useful it is having a live camera feed in the laser cutter instead of having to align and position your material by guesswork. So let me tell you how I used to do this. Usually I would hone the machine, place some sacrificial material like cardboard, set my focus, cut out a blank of where I want my cut to be, put my object in that blank, reset the focus and hope the homing was the same, 
and then cut it in place. Now this machine, you just move it in place using the camera as a guide and then you're good to go. But now we come to the pointy end of the discussion. How much does the laser box cost? Well, quite a lot. Um, in Australia, it's priced at around $10,000 Australian, which is a bit more than a K40, um, a lot more than a K40. And honestly, too expensive for a home hobbyist, but I don't think this is aimed at that market. It's pretty clearly aimed at education and small business use. And at that price, it is a very compelling option, let me tell you, compared to other laser systems currently occupying that market segment. I really think with a system like this, it could be pretty interesting putting a business case together for if a machine like this could be paid off with work and how long it would take. So let me know if that sounds interesting to you because I'd like to explore stuff like that in future. We're comparing this to a few of the other smart laser cutters on the market, such as the Glowforge and Dremel Digilab laser cutter. It seems similar on paper, but I'd have to get a closer look at the others to see what the quality differences are. But I do like that the laser box can be used without a constant internet connection if required. And the fact that at no point does MakeBlock call this a 3D laser printer. It's a laser cutter. Thank you very much. If you'd like to learn more about the MakeBlock laser box, you can find links in the video description below. And full disclosure, MakeBlock sent me the laser box free of charge for review, though I did agree to send them this video before release to make sure I didn't have any factual errors because it's my first major laser cutter review on the channel, but all opinions are my own. Thanks for watching guys, bye.